Dear students, uh, so now we would like to discuss about the next topic uh, in progress that will be on projectile motion. This topic is also basically going to be discussing motion in a plane. So let's try to talk about some key features regarding to motion in a plane. So let us say that uh, you have an object and this object is moving with a velocity of v. And if I apply a force in this direction, which is in the same direction as the velocity. Now, since this force and this velocity are in the same direction, I would like to call this force as the tangential force. So, if you look carefully at what would be the role of this tangential force, you'll appreciate that this tangential force is going to increase the speed of the body. So I will say the speed is increased. And we will not expect that if the ball is going in this direction, it will start to go in some other direction. Okay. So if it is going in a straight line in 1D motion, it will continue to go in 1D. It will not go in a plane. So I will say the speed is increased, but there is no change in direction. And the same thing will happen if I have this ball going in this direction and if I apply a force in the anti-parallel direction. So we will see here that there will be no change in direction. And uh, as far as the uh, speed is concerned, we will see that the speed is decreased. Okay. So both of these forces are called tangential forces, uh, whether it's parallel or whether it's anti-parallel. Okay. On the other hand, if I have an object which I throw in the horizontal direction in the air, then we know that there will be a normal force due to gravity. So normal force, because this force is perpendicular to the velocity, that is the reason why I call this force as a normal force. Now this ball will start moving in a plane and it will change its direction. But at every point of time, you will see that the normal velocity and the velocity, the normal force and the velocity will always be perpendicular to each other. So we will generalize here that the role of this normal force will be to change the direction. So instead of a 1D motion, it will start going in a two-dimensional motion. Okay. So that is basically motion in a plane. So whenever you have a change in direction, we can expect that there will be a normal force. So let's see some examples here. So let's say that you're, you're having a circular motion. So it's uh, going round and round around the circle. So if there is an object that is uh, having a tangential velocity in this direction, and we see that it's continuously changing its direction. So one thing is sure that a force that is perpendicular to the velocity is compulsory because otherwise it is impossible to have a circular motion. Okay, so this is a normal force and uh, tangential force is optional. It is not necessary that this body has to increase its speed or decrease its speed when it's going in a circular motion. But this particular force is compulsory. Okay, or for that matter, any curved path. If I take and say that this object is going like this in a curved path, okay, this is an object. So uh, instantaneous velocity at this point will be uh, tangential to the path. So like this tangential path. So one thing is sure that because it's changing its direction, there has to be some normal uh, force. It's possible that uh, the force may be acting in this direction and you can resolve that into two components. So in, in, in case the force is acting along this direction, then you will see that this object will go along a curved path and along with changing its direction will also increase its speed because the, the velocity and uh, the tangential force are ta apparent to each other. So basically this chapter that we are going to discuss is projectile motion. And this chapter is going to talk about motion under the influence of gravity.
So you can see here that if there is an object and let's say that I project it in this direction with the velocity of u. Okay. So now we would like to understand whether will it move in a straight line, that's one dimensional motion or whether it will be a two dimensional motion. For that purpose, I uh, try to draw one line here and let's say this is the x-axis because x-axis can be any direction. It's not necessarily x has to be like this. X can be like this also. And then I draw a perpendicular in this way. And let's call this axis as the y-axis. Okay. So now the force which is acting on this object of mass m will be the gravitational force, mg, which is acting in the vertically downward direction. Now I can uh, find components of this uh, force along the x and y directions so that I can appreciate whether there is a normal force or whether there is a tangential force. So if I say this angle is theta, then we know that cos theta is adjacent upon hypotenuse. So the component of the weight along this direction that I'm showing here will be mg cos theta. And the component of force in this direction, which is anti-parallel to the direction of the velocity will be mg sin theta because sin theta is opposite upon hypotenuse. So this one here, this vector and this vector are same. They are parallel to each other. So I will see here that uh, is there a tangential force? I will say yes, there is a tangential force that is mg sin theta. Is there a normal force? Yes, there is a normal force also because the force and the velocity are perpendicular to each other here at this point of time. Okay. So the role of this normal force will be to change the direction. That's first thing. And the role of this tangential force here, because it's anti-parallel, it will decrease the speed. That means projectile motion is going to be expected here under the influence of gravity in the form of a motion in a plane where the, uh, the direction will also change and the speed will also keep changing in this particular way. Okay. So if I now try to analyze the very basics here, one of the, some of the basic assumptions, what we'll be having in this uh, projectile motion is that there is no force in the horizontal direction. When you play badminton, so you see that is also an example of projectile motion. The shuttlecock will go in this direction if you hit it like this. But if there is air resistance, then you'll see that this shuttlecock will go in some other direction. Okay, so but in international competitions, we have everything covered up. So therefore, if you hit the, uh, the shuttlecock, it will go the way it's intended to go. So for simplicity of analysis, we assume that there is no force in the horizontal direction, which may not be true in the real world. So the consequence of this is that if I project a body with a velocity of u, making an angle of theta with the horizontal, you can resolve this velocity into two components, the cos theta component and the sine theta component. Okay. And uh, you can see that in the horizontal direction, if there is no force, then there is no reason to believe that why the velocity will change in the horizontal direction at any point. If I ask you uh, at this point, uh, let's say at this point, what is the horizontal velocity? I will say it continues to remain u cos theta. Because we know according to Newton's first law, if there is no force acting, then there is no need of changing the velocity. The velocity will continue in uniform motion. Here, what would be the velocity at the topmost point? It will continue to remain u cos theta. Here, it will be u cos theta. And finally, it comes to the ground also, it will be u cos theta only. But the vertical component of the velocity will keep on reducing. And here at the topmost point, it will be zero. And here it will again keep increasing. And finally, it will become the maximum value at this point. Okay. So we will be discussing in the next class about basics of uh, projectile motion. And we'll try to solve some basic problems in that. Okay. Thank you so much for watching.